What's going on, people? We're back in the house, back again with another show. The weekend preview is here. We're going to talk all things Liverpool, we're going to talk all things Champions League and Europa League. And then we look towards the weekend, which is a big game at the Emirates, Arsenal and Aston Villa. We've got Billy on to represent Villa. Billy, how you doing, bro? I'm good, thanks, mate. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm looking forward to this game at the weekend, man. We're going to get into it and Unai Emery can come back and try and get some revenge. It's going to be a good game. There's some uh, doubts over injuries. We're going to talk about team news and talk about what we expect for that game. And then, first of all, we're going to talk about Liverpool because Rom's last night was a bad day at the office, man. How are you feeling? Bad, bad day at the office. Well, no, nice to be back. Big up, Dan. It's been a while due to work commitments for both of us. It's been a while since this show. I missed Billy as well. Big up, Billy. Big up everyone in the chat, but... I've had better days. These last couple of weeks with United arch rivals Duncan and us twice last night. It's not been nice. It's funny how football can change in an instant, man. But yeah, I'm good. I'm good other than that. I'm good. Yeah, man. We got listen. We might have Mo and Jacob joining us soon, but for now it's just us three. So we're going to talk things. Listen, Roms, I've got a, I mean, I mentioned it on the previous stream, but I've got to mention some of your players, man. One of the players we didn't mention was Darwin Nunez, because for me, I think the guy's got ability to cause chaos and havoc. But I do look at his chances missed and I think, wow. And it was mad last season, right? Because a lot of people were giving him stick, Darwin Nunez, because they were comparing him to Haaland, saying like the big money signing. And I thought right. that was harsh. Do you know what? If he could finish, he'd probably have the same bloody numbers as him, man. This guy misses so many chances. It's incredible. And... I feel like him, also Sobozlai, I felt like uh, Cody Gakpo, Diaz. Some of these guys have got to hold it L. But maybe Klopp has to do last night for making so many changes. And, you know, I know the team should have been good enough to beat Atalanta. But there's a few things I've thrown at you there, man. But I think it needs discussing, bro. Yeah, for me, the the, the whole show changed. For me, in a quarterfinal, look, like I said to you in the previous stream, the team was good enough, in my opinion, to beat Atalanta. But to make five, six changes in a quarter final for me probably wasn't the best in, in hindsight, right? But for me, forget the starting 11. It was the individual performance, like you said. A lot of the names you've mentioned, I've been critical of and I've had my fan base slate me for it. You can't say that. I'm make, trying to make excuses. Nunes, and I'm a big... Um, I've backed him a lot of this season. Mo will know from early in the season. I've backed him many times in this show, um, Dan. But comes to a point where them guilt as chances will be detrimental to things that like knockout ties, big games in the league, whatnot. The reason why he got shifted to the left wing is because he didn't do his job scoring goals in the middle. That's when you have hear this narrative that he's best as a winger now, that's this because he didn't do his job essentially. What we brought him in for, he ultimately failed at. So we then had to put him on the left and he somewhat contributed to the team with assists. Because it's very rare you start I think it's a recent thing you start to include Assist. I think Tapping Tove said it. You start to include assists for strikers. The only way you start to do that to make the numbers sound better is when they're miss the um misfiring. So Nunes, the moment I'm not even mad at him now because I just know what you're going to get with him now. That when that chance went to it to him, I've played football when I'm a forward. What he needed to do is then sh he needed to shift his body quickly to the left and open up because the Atlanta keeper literally showed him the right hand side of the goal, and he did what he he does. He missed the opportunity. Harvey Elliott was was unlucky. But the names you mentioned, I said Luis Diaz for a while now. I remember when he got the injury at your place. I remember when Thomas Party um injured him and I said, he's now apprehensive. He's not the Diaz we saw our first six months. He's now quite apprehensive. And they started to mention things of his dad and whatnot. We can't use, use that excuse forever. We just can't. Because now, for me, he's a rich man. Alex St. Maximum, he's got tricks and flicks. But the GA isn't that good. And when you see where a lot of his GAs come from, it's Europa League. In Premier League games, when we need him to rise, in Jota and Salah's absence, he hasn't really risen for me. So for me, if 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 this quote is true that PSG want to offer us that 70 million, I think Salah's going. But if Salah does stay, I wouldn't mind selling him. But I think Salah's going. So we kind of have to keep Diaz. We can't leave ourselves too short in that forward department, right? But so Bosna, I have to admit, he is a flop. I just have to hold my hands up. He's a flop. He had a good, he had a first good nine games of this season, but he's not it. The only reason why I'm not going to be, I don't know if you're familiar with Ryan, but he's very actually, he always says we need to now sell him and whatnot. I'm not with that opinion. The reason why I'm going to give him another year is because we're going to get, most likely going to get an Amarim and he could flourish in another system. But this season in isolation, he's been a flop. I just have to hold my hands up and I'm not going to be um, reactionary and say, Let's just sell him. I'm just going to give him to him next season. But I've accepted this season. He's a flop. But 
other than that, it's just even today, McAllister Endo that have been very good for us were poor yesterday. I've still called it out. They were poor. Yeah, our actual best player is a player that I don't necessarily rate, which was Cody Gapo. He's the only one from last night that can kind of leave the game with his head held high. He was doing things we've not seen in months. Get, getting the ball, travelling the ball, trying to break lines with dribbles in, instead of passes. But there was a lot of bad individual performance yesterday. The back four, as a collective and individually, weren't good. Van Dijk had one of his worst games. Kanate did. Simicast isn't good enough, and I've said this. He's just not. He's coming. He's had a few good games and spells with us, but he's not good enough, in my opinion. I've been with that opinion from when we, we signed him. Gomez right back. Again, I think he's ridden his luck. He's been very good for us now. But even a Bradley, when he's been in the team, he offers something more offensively. Gomez has offered that on the left-hand side, but now he's in that right back role. It, he didn't have one of his best games. But for me, it was a lot of, forget the team as a whole, individually, the majority of our team was poor. I think mean, another player that can that can actually um hold his head held high was Andy Robertson, because he's come in and we started to look somewhat better. He started to offer um, service to Jota, started to play in the midfield. He even did it against Sheffield the other day. That sub, for me, not the McAllister goal, that sub for me is what won, won us the game. But Jota and Gakpo are literally the only two players I can say that can come off that game feeling somewhat they put in a shift. But we were poor and it's embarrassing. And now we, we face an uphill battle. I personally don't think we're going through, like I just said to you, in the next stream. And for us to go through, we're going to have to be, in my opinion, be ahead at half time which I just can't see Atlanta will score at their ground. And I know a lot of people say, oh, Liverpool are the comeback kings. But the com common denominator is normally when we've done that, it's come. it's been teams having to come at Anfield second leg. We're having to go there. So it's embarrassing now. And I do believe now the rivals are going to have fun with it. But I do believe Carabao's the only thing we'll win. We're, we're still going to give a go in the league. We'll still take it to the last day. But yesterday was just embarrassing. One of the most embarrassing defeats of the Klopp era, 100%. Yeah, it has to be, man. I did some uh, research and you've only lost to uh, teams 3-0 twice in the Premier League era. One of them's to Real Madrid, which to be fair is no shame. They can do that to anyone. But the other one was West Ham in 2014 or 15. So that's how yes, long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I didn't ago, remember. Man. That's what I didn't remember in the past yeah, three. Yeah, so long ago, bro. So long ago, man. And um, listen, Mo, I'll come to you next. Uh, before I do that, there's 200 people in here, people already. Make sure you do me a favour and hit the like button. Let's get up to 100 likes ASAP. Make sure you go follow these guys as well. You're going to be redirected to Footy Judge Mo after this show at 6 o'clock. So please make sure that you stay tuned for that. Mo, was you expecting that from Atalanta last night at Anfield? Was that a shock to you? What happened, bro? Yeah, very shocking. Uh, of course, I, I was shocked by that. Um, I think uh, one of the things I said yesterday is uh, a lot of people are actually scapegoating the players and not looking at the manager. Like, you hear a lot of Liverpool fans talking about Nunes is not good. Sabozla is not good. Salah let us down. Van Dijk let us down. But I thought yesterday that the one guy that I'm looking at first before the players is Jurgen Klopp. Failed miserably in adjusting his tactics within the game. Um, failed miserably in reading the game. Gasperini completely schooled him. The game was played the same exact rhythm from Atalanta by 90 minutes and Jurgen Klopp. People said he made the subs. Well, if I was on the bench, I would make the same subs. Like, you're losing. Of course, I'm going to put Salah, Sabozla, Robertson. Like, what? Anybody. Roms could have made the same subs. Like, it's not it's not rocket science. It's about adjustments on the pitch. And he just didn't. He didn't do anything different. He was wide open the whole game. The midfield was non-existent in terms of tackles, in terms of positioning. These Ederson guys, and I don't watch a lot of Atalanta, but these guys look like they're the world beaters. And uh, Liverpool players look like they are a League One players or League Two players, with all due respect. And that is not on, only because of ability. It was because of, number one, motivational speech at halftime or motivational speech before the game. And the players fed off the energy that the media and Jurgen Klopp and everybody did. When, he, when you play in a quarterfinal, that lineup, you're sending a message in the dressing room that, well, we won this game already. It's not important. It, it's just, I played football. And I know sometimes when I used to play the cup game, and we send, like, when, when we used to play the bench, the guys know that the manager is literally thinking that they won the game. Like, he's not taking it serious. And no matter what you say and what you tell the guys, yeah, show your, show your abilities and stuff, the guys know that 
if the coach is taken this seriously, he would have played his first team. Because at the end, what is harder? Atalanta in a quarterfinal or Crystal Palace at home? It's definitely Crystal Palace at home. Without a shadow of a doubt. But he told the players, maybe indirectly, that the game's over. And it showed in the game. There's one play in this game that I think I looked at and it, and it gave me that signal. Di Catalara, right? went on that right side. Van Dijk had full control of the ball. Van Dijk didn't try to clear it. He went so soft and the Catalara pressed, went to the corner line. This possessed Van Dijk, which is not something that doesn't normally happen. And Van Dijk looked so casual, like he doesn't care. Or what are you going to do with the ball? And that is the message, to be honest. Jurgen Klopp is the first guy I'm looking at. First guy I'm looking at, to be honest. Is that fair, Roms? No, it, but it, she said what I said at the start. I think when he made them five, six changes with that starting lineup, I'm still not going to say I expected Atlanta to win either of the starting lineup, but it does show an air of arrogance. I still thought we would win the game. When I saw the lineup, I thought, cool, maybe go one or two ahead, maybe Atlanta get a goal, and then we bring on maybe Salah and Drop for the last 10, 20 minutes. But it showed an air because Black most of that play football as well. And when you play your second string team, you know your manager subconsciously is thinking, We've already got these beat. There's a reason why I'm resting my big players. It's 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 not rocket science. It's not rocket science at all. But I think most spot on there. And the thing, what upset me as well is the reason why I think we're level on points with you, lot, Dan. Because the thing is, we've been playing like this all season. We've just got away with it. But I think the reason what, what upset me is the reason why we're level on points with you, Dan, is because of individual brilliance and Klopp's. For me, his tactical. His tactical now this season, knowing when to make the right subs, knowing who to put on. Because I would say the last two months since the turn of the year, it's our subs that have won us the game. I think there's even a metric that a lot of our subs have won us, I think, the most points or in the top three. So what Klopp's been flourishing at this season was his detriment yesterday. The subs weren't good. The starting 11 was good, but even the subs wasn't... They weren't logical subs because that most said, you, you know to bring on Jota Sally. You need goals now, so you're going to bring them on. But tactically... He was a net to last night. And it's not, it's what he's been good at this season, as to my, my opinion, why we're level with you. But what Mo said, he was, he was bang on. And now it just leaves us an uphill battle. And now I actually believe Klopp is actually going to play a strong team in the second leg, which is going to be a detriment to us because we've got Fulham at Craven Cottage, the last game on the Sunday. And if you look at the last two visits there, last season we drew there, Carabao Cup second leg. If that was an extra 10 minutes, they could have took us the extra time. We actually struggle away at Fulham. So now I think we shot ourselves in the foot because he's going to play a strong team away in Bergamo. He shouldn't. He shouldn't. He shouldn't. He shouldn't. He, no, we shouldn't. But I he think shouldn't. he will, Mo. I think he will. I he, think will he will destroy everything. If he plays a strong... The problem is with that, and I'm sorry. I know you want to get Billy in. If he plays a strong team and don't win, he's done. Mm. Yeah. If he yeah. plays a strong team... And don't win. What I mean, don't win. He can win 1-0 and 2-0. It'll be all right. But if he plays a strong team and loses the game or draws the game, confidence is gone. It's done. That is the main problem. I would rather, if I was a Liverpool fan... Well, he just accepts he's lost now, then, Mo. That's yeah, it, done. If I Move was on. him, I would accept it. I would accept it because I would still have the confidence of the first teamers, of the starting eleven. If he plays a strong eleven. And goes to Bergamo and loses the game, everyone will think I can beat this Liverpool team. Nobody's gonna get scared. It's done, it's over for them. People are gonna have courage to go at them. He needs to accept it, he needs to play this smart. Mentally, he needs to play this smart. It's not he's not drawing, he, he lost 3-0 at home. And Atalanta at home might win with Liverpool's first team, and that will be absolutely humiliating. These players, their head will go down. If just, they lose just, with the first team. No, just before Billy comes in, though, I know what my manager does under pressure. There's been many times... How many Liverpool lineups, even as a neutral, are like, oh, Klopp's gone strong here when he doesn't have to. So that's what I'm saying. I agree with you, Mo. I don't think he should go strong. I actually think we should just prioritise the league, put all our eggs in the league. But I, I actually think he's going to play our strongest possible eleven to try and still go for that trophy. And we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot because Fulham will be... Ch Marco Silva has, has had Klopp's number, even a 4-3 at Anfield. It took a late winner by Trent to beat them. Fulham actually always give us a game. And I don't want him playing the strongest team, but I know what Klopp's like. Under pressure, he's going to want to get to the semis and he's going to play our strongest team. I can, I'll can. i be very... How about this? I'll be very shocked if he doesn't play our strong team. 
I'll just be shocked because I, I know what Klopp can be like. Interesting, man. Billy, let me bring you in because it's not just about Liverpool last night. It's about Liverpool now for the end of the season because they want Klopp to bow out in the best way possible. And to do that now for me, they have to win another trophy. And that trophy probably now has to be the Premier League. Do you think that, like Mo, they should just forget this now and concentrate on the next seven games? Or do you think they should try and get back into some form of pride for this competition? And what do you expect will happen with this Liverpool side moving forward now? Um, as a selfish Villa fan, I want Liverpool to go out and try and try, try and overturn the deficit to get that coefficient up for fifth place, if I'm being honest with you. Um, <laughs> do I think it will happen? I do agree that, that he's going to play a stronger team. I don't think Klopp's going to gonna get, get, going to give up that easy. Um, but I saw someone on Twitter earlier, you know, I think they said um, this could be the start of Liverpool's downfall. And people were like, and he posted a screenshot of their their Premier League games. I think they've got Palace this week, Fulham, and then is it West Ham, Broms? West Ham and, and then it's Everton. And Everton, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, you look at those four games and they're teams that, yeah, they're not going, or certainly not um, Palace, um, Everton and Fulham. They're not going for Europe, but they're teams that can take points off the big boys every now and then. Do you know what I mean? They're they're teams that can sneak results. And I saw a lot of people taking the mick out of that, that tweet and actually thought, no, he's, he's bang on because they are, they are such difficult teams. A derby can go either way, no matter how good or how bad you're playing. It, it, it's a derby at the end of the day, all the fans are up for it. Um, and it's just one of those that really can go either way on the day. Fulham, like you say, they're they're a top team. They've just they not long overturned Fulham three, uh, overturned Spurs. Sorry, three nil. Yeah, they're they're a they're a very good team. Really hard to beat on their day. Really good team on their day. Um, and so uh, it's it's going to be really tough for Liverpool now, especially if they do go all out for. The uh, in the second leg and don't overcome it. it, it it's going to be really tough for them, and obviously, like Mo said as well, that has a detrimental impact on the mental side. They're going to get their heads down if they don't go through. So it, it's one of them. It, it's a it's an impossible task really for Jurgen Klopp because what does he do? He can't really win either way because if he just chucks in the towel, he's going to get criticism for that. And if they chuck in the towel and don't win the league, then he's going to get criticism for that. Do you know what I mean? It's it, it's it's a bit of a lose-lose situation for him, I think. There is a way mm. out of this. There is a simple way out of this. Plays a second-string team. Doesn't have to go through. But be resolute. Mm. And try to win 1-0 or 2-1. Yeah. And say we tried. I, I think this is the best, the best outcome. But I know this mentality... He's got the problem with Jurgen Klopp is that he feeds off the media. Yeah, you just took it's, the words he's out. He's so influenced by the media, like in the press conferences before the games, and when the reporters ask him, he feeds so much off the media. So he will believe that he needs to play his first team. He's gonna believe the people, the scousers. He's gonna believe the journalists around him. And he's gonna, oh my god, let's do this for Liverpool. Bro, just oh, calm actually... down, bro. Just calm down. You know, be <laughs> Pep, be Arteta. You know what I mean? Sometimes Arteta, which is something I, I like about Arteta sometimes, is that they try to wind him up in the press conference, and he's like, No, it's on me. No, the players didn't make mistakes, it's on me. I told him to do so. Pep does this sometimes. Uh no, Jurgen Klopp is not like Jurgen Klopp. You ask him a question, and he's like, he's fired up. And I think that's, I think that's, a, that's a big thing about him. It's a double-edged sword, right? Because the players feed off his energy and they give everything, but sometimes he makes the wrong decisions. Do you know what, Mo? I can actually name you. I think the team of ready that I think he'll play next next Thursday. All, all thing, albeit no one gets injured at the weekend. He probably, if Alisson's back, actually, even if Alisson's back, I think he persists with Keller because he does that in the in the cup competition. I think Trent is back in training and he'll probably make a cameo on the bench this weekend, right? He'll probably go Trent, Canati, Van Dijk, Robertson, 
We're going to go McAllister, Endo, and I'll say Jones. I think he'll drop some buzz there, but he'll go Jones, um, McAllister, Endo. And he'll probably go Diaz, Jota, and Sal. I think he'll go as strong as possible. And that's why, Mo, when you, when you first said it's not a good idea, I said, it's not that I would do, but he will feed off the... The media will pressure him into, oh, this is your last season. And I think you may not... You, you lot may not know this, or you may know this, but Dublin, we've got a big Irish following. So... Dublin, that final in Dublin means a lot to our club. Klopp's going to feed off that. He's going to he's going to be aware of these narratives and he's going to play the strongest team. And I just feel with our strongest team, I still think we won't go through. We'll be exhausted and we go to a, a fully fresh Fulham that I've had a whole week off. I, I just wouldn't... I agree with you, man. I think we should just play a second string team. Just be, have a respectable scoreline, not lose, even if it was to draw and then go from there. Honestly, go from there. Because we shot, you know, even if we had scored last night, would if we had lost three one, I would have more confidence going there. But the fact we didn't even score a goal, a three 0 deficit, it's hard to overturn, man. It's, it's I agree, hard. man. I agree. Before I ever go back to Billy uh, Roms quickly, you got Palace this weekend, man. Is that gonna give you a little bit of a confidence not going into this game, or are you gonna be able to just uh, comfortably win this one? I don't think we'll be comfortable. I think we win the game. We'll we'll need a reaction. I don't know if we're going to do score prediction at the end of the segment, but I don't think it's going to be a comfortable. But we we have to react. We must because this is a whole other competition, and we do want to still take it to the wire with yourselves and and City. So I do think we win the game. <laughs> do I think it'll be a do I think we keep a clean sheet and it'll be comprehensive? No, because we've kept two clean sheets in our last sixteen games and all. Cooked competitions which is shocking even just saying that but Palace do I actually will go as far as Palace probably take the lead lead and that's why yesterday even when we went one nil down I thought hmm will we still inevitably come back because we've been doing that all season we normally go a goal down to then you've seen the graphic last 15 minutes of games we scored the most goals and I think by quite a margin by three or four and I think the next sec second team is is about four four goals less but I think Palace take the lead. They have Elise. Elise is back and he will now start with Eze and Mateta. But we'll win the game. It won't be easy, but we'll, we'll win the game, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think you will win the game. I'm going to go 3-1. Um, that's what I think it will be, considering you score a concede all the time. It's mad. I think you'll be comfortable. I think Liverpool have to bounce back, and I think you will, bro. So, um, what's your score prediction, Roms, did you say? I'll go 2-1. Go 2-1. 2-1. Billy, what are you saying? I was going to go 2-1 as well. OK, Mo? 3-1 Liverpool. Yeah, I think 3-1 as well, man. I can't lie. I think it will be that, 100%. Um, let's touch on Villa last night, Bill, and then we'll go into the preview for this game with Arsenal at the weekend. Um, probably the best result that I could have wanted because Villa, at 2-1, the tie's not over. Um, I didn't want you to win, like, 3-4-0 because, obviously, then you go into this weekend and it's like, you know what, we've got a little bit of eyes on the midweek, but... Not really that much because we're through. I think both of us now have eyes on midweek games that are going to be massive for both clubs. I think it's fair to say that this Aston Villa team are in this competition seriously as Arsenal are in the Champions League, right? Yeah. So, you know, you look at that as your Champions League. So both of these teams are going to have one eye on Wednesday and, and Thursday, right? But for me, this weekend, um, I needed that to be the case, that you were still looking at this game. And I looked at you last night. I just think you are the favourites to win this competition. I think you're going to win it. I know you had a slippery start and Lawless was taking the mick out of you when you lost your group st stage game, right? But since then, it's been pretty much faultless. Um, last night's performance, one guy that I keep mentioning and we mentioned previously, Ollie Watkins again, man. I mean, we're talking about this guy's yeah. goals and assists as being the best in the league right now. And I wanted to ask you because people are talking about England. If Harry Kane was to get a knock, Tony would just get straight in. Is that a little bit insulting to Watkins? A guy who's been out like with a gambling ban for eight months gets ahead of Ollie Watkins, who's got the best GA in football. Like it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is really insulting, to be honest with you, because you know, you look at that, he's 28 goal contributions in 31 games. Watkins is Phenomenal. for Watkins this season. You know, this isn't Man City we're talking about. This isn't Mo Salah or a, a, a Saka or a Martinelli. You know, this is this is Ollie Watkins for Aston Villa that we're talking about. Um, I think it's it's he's had a phenomenal, phenomenal season. I remember I predicted on Pete's show on Loaded Mag first game of the season. He was asking us where do we think, how do we think Watkins is going to do this season? 
like I said, I reckon I reckon if he continues or if Villa continue how we do, I reckon we, he's going to get 20 goals. I came off that show thinking, I don't know, I think I think that might just be a little bit too many. But he's, he's there and I'd be very, very surprised if he doesn't get past that 20 goal mark already being on 18, obviously. All of them, no penalties either. So not one of them was a penalty. So they're all... Wow. Um, all, all three... Yeah. Oh all, all, all eight, yeah, all eighteen goals have been non-penalties, um, which just makes it even more impressive, in my opinion. Um, the the Watkins Tony debate for England, I think, is is a bit silly for for that reason. They're two very different players as well. Yeah, they I are. think if if you're talking s- styles, I think Tony probably suits England a little bit better because of how we set up with Harry Kane, the way he drops deep, that kind of thing. But if you're talking about quality of a player and particularly their output this season it's it's not even a debate for me Watkins has he, he's just been phenomenal and you, and you know Pot so I've been a big critic of him um with his with his finishing in particular but you know yeah. he, he just proves me wrong time and time and time again and and it's just something that I can't pull him up for anymore yes he's going to miss chances of course every striker does Haaland does you know Kane Kane does but that that's part of football. So I, I can't pull him down on that. He, he, like I say, he's just proven me wrong time and time again. So he's he just continues to go strength to strength and, and it's incredible. I just hope we can we can get it over the line next week. I think at the weekend we'll probably go for a slightly weakened team. Obviously, Louise is out suspended anyway. Um we'll probably play Matty Cash for for part of the game. He's just come back from a hamstring injury, so I don't think he'll start. But I think he'll probably come on with half an hour to go, probably start against Lille next week. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm not expecting much, to be perfectly honest with you, against Arsenal. Can I ask I think... you something, Billy? Yeah, of course. Where do you see Aston Villa? In the How do you mean? Two, three years. Two, three years, I genuinely see us competing for Champions League. Genuinely, but, but you are. Yeah, I, I, I think we'll be competing for Champions League, and but you know we are competing for Champions League now, but we're also competing in a lesser um, European competition against lesser sides. I genuinely think that we can be competing for Champions League while playing Champions League as well. That's what I hope. We've just had um, confirmation. Um, of further investment into V Sports, the holding company that that own Aston Villa as well, but with a six point five billion dollar company, I think they're they're valued at. Um, so our owners and and the investment and their ambitions aren't going away anytime soon. So I, I do see us up there competing and fighting for for a long time. This isn't just a flash in the pan kind of thing. We're going to be up here for for a good while. I think while, what you mean is well, Billy, that you're, you're you're not up there at the moment because everybody else is rubbish. No, That's exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. it's not. No, like, I don't mean that. Know. I actually think the aspiration shouldn't be. Is an Aston Villa with a we're like one of the good teams. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur has been close to the top forever, and they haven't won anything in the recent eras. Like, and they basically haven't challenged for the league apart from that Leicester year. Right? Why can't Aston Villa go and do what Arsenal do, for example? What is stopping someone like Aston Villa? I'm not saying win the league. I'm saying yeah, be in contention. Yeah. Why are Spurs... Okay, so let me ask you that question in another way. Because I, I was thinking about this the other day. Why are Spurs fans saying two, three windows with Ange Postacoglu will be competing for the league? But every Villa fan is saying... Well, we just want to be there. We want to be consistently making top four, top five. I, I I think that comes from a Villa fan's slight pessimism over the over the years of supporting Aston Villa. You know, for me anyway, all I've ever, other than in two thousand and eight when I was when I was six or seven, just growing up. You know, we've we've only really been around the relegation spots. And that's, that's the same for a lot of people my age, obviously. Um, and so 
just just to see us where we are at the minute, a European quarterfinal, winning in that quarterfinal in the first leg, favourites to win the tournament, we've been fourth for most of the season, in the top four for most of the season, um, just dropped out this week, obviously. Um Chances are, if you're looking at the if you're looking at the percentages, chances are that England are still, despite the poor midweek results, England are still going to get fifth place. Um, the Champions League no, they won't. going down to fifth. Germany place. went ahead. I, I've se- I've seen it today saying that we're still fifty seven percent apparently, um, yeah. but I don't know. But look, the the fact that we're up there is. Just a dream, you know. Five, but, uh, five how years do you ago, get we next playing... level, Billy. Because, like, I appreciate what you're saying, and I agree with you that you want to be Champions League. Mo's reply was, "You're already there now, but you're not. You don't want to be there because Man United and Chelsea are whack, and Newcastle have had injuries, and because mm. uh, you know the other teams are, are dropping off right now. Next season, let's say Liverpool fall off. I don't think they will personally. I know Klopp's going, a few other players might, but I still think Liverpool will be up there, right? How do you get? And how long does it take for you to get to an Arsenal level, for example, competing, <clears throat> challenging for the title? Like you need money behind it. I think the club are going to back Emery with money. Yeah. You need stability. You need board that's working together. I think you kind of might have that. So I think Mo's onto something here. Like could Villa dream the dream and try to challenge in, say, two seasons' time? I we probably could, but being a Villa fan, I don't want to get my hopes. I don't want to. Over hope, if you know what I'm trying to say. You know, I don't want to get my hopes up too high, and then maybe we do have a poor, poor season, a little bit like Newcastle this season, and then we're brought back down to earth like a ton of bricks, kind of thing. Um, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can do. Maybe we can do. Like I say, the the owners aren't going anywhere. They're incredibly um, ambitious. Uh, it, it's going to obviously need heavy investment, and I don't think there's many better managers than the new Emery. You know, he's got everything that he's ever wanted at Aston Villa. So I don't know. I'm, I'd like to think that we will be. Um, I think it's. I think we need to. Obviously, with financial fair play and whatnot, we're going to have to be getting our scouting spot on for these youngsters coming through. Buying them when they're when they're young, just before they get scouted by a Man City or an Arsenal um, or a Liverpool or whoever, um, just getting them at the right time. So our scouting is obviously going to be have to be spot on. Um, I just I just don't know whether going for the league in a couple of years is just a little step too far. But I don't know that this is this is me as a as a Villa fan. I, like I say, I don't want to get my hopes like up too high. Like you, you know, you got to complete saying first. I get it, but um, sorry, Rums, before you come in, because I feel like if you do have money and backing, and let's say you got six players in the next couple of windows, I don't know, maybe you get in one window. Like for me, you know, Emmy Martinez is good. You might want to back up goalkeeper that's better than your trash you've got. But right back obviously is an issue if Konza and yeah. um, Ash is cashed there. Maybe another centre half, maybe a creative midfielder, maybe another striker to back up Watkins. You're not too far from a good squad there then. Do you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, uh, yeah, to be honest with you, we, we've we also got players out injured. You know, Brent, Buba, yeah. Kamara, Buba Kamara, Buendia, Kamara, by the way, we miss him so, so Quality. much. Quality Our midfield player. at the minute is so easy to, to kind of bypass because you don't have that midfield general in the middle to break up play like the way he does. Um, so having him out for, for nine months or whatever it is with an ACL is a huge loss. Um, so I, th- I think that's probably one of the most important places in the in the summer transfer window to bring someone in who can replace him for the beginning of next season and then going forward competing with him for a place because that that's what we're going to have to do ultimately we're going to have to get a second squad that is as good as the first squad. To, no, but on paper you have the, you have but on paper you have one of the best squads. You are the only. I think you probably arguably. One of the only teams in the league that have two players in every position. Every position. I don't know if it's a squad no Apart more. from Olsen. It's one of the better midfields as well. Because I was going to say, I know you, your, your, your question was where do you see yourself in two, three years? And Pops, you were kind of saying realistically what, what it could be. But I think the main thing for Villa is, 
I know you'll speak about adding and, and having financial backing or whatnot, but it's also keeping what you already have because let's have it right. Big clubs are going to come in. If, these are the uh, three or four players I think will be sniffing around Villa, but I think the only way they'll stay is if they see a clear, because your project at the moment well, I'm um, working, but I think that Champions League knock from a club will be, a Champions League club will be big because I think Watkins could have his head turned. Douglas Ruiz could have his head turned. You speak about Bubu Kamara. He won't leave, obviously, because of ACL. But remember, we were linked with him this summer quite heavy. Um, maybe just I might be forgetting players. I think I think Diaby and Bailey will stay another year. I think they'll actually give. There'll be clubs that show interest, but I think because they're both still relatively new, especially Diaby. I think they'll stay. Brendia to come back in the fold next season. But I think Douglas Ruiz and Watkins, two pivotal plays in your starting eleven. I think clubs will be in for them. And I think if Villa could keep them beyond this summer and at players, I think you can have a, when I say special season, obviously not win the Prem whatnot, but you could possibly even, like most of you are comp competing for top four now, but you could kind of not only stay in the top four, but like even improve maybe your points tally. Do you know what I mean? For next yeah. season. But I think keeping what you have will be, it will be crucial this summer. Crucial. Yeah. Do you, do you know what? I, I genuinely, um, I, ca I can't see many players leaving Villa this summer yeah. at all, to be honest. Because, you know, you see Watkins' goal celebration last night. He was he was saying, like, I'm here kind of thing. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's a hint that he's definitely not leaving in the summer. But he's also, I think, 14 goals away from beating Gabby Abonlahor's record for Premier League goals at Villa. So I, I'd like to think that that's something that he would want to achieve. Um, I also think um, that getting Champions League and playing that with Villa, if we, if we do get there, obviously, I think they'll want to do that. And and it comes back to what Emi Martinez has recently said as well, you know. it For him, it's the merit of playing Champions League for a club that nobody really expects to be there. You know, we, we've we given Emi Martinez... We're, we're, I, don't want, I don't want to sound... Like we're the reason that Messi's won the World Cup, but we're the reason we gave Emmy Martinez an opportunity when he was looking out the door at out the door at Arsenal. We gave him that opportunity. He's repaid us tenfold. But it, it, it's the way that he says that it's it's easy to to leave and go to a Champions League club and compete for titles with with a top club. It's the merit of doing it for a club that nobody expects to be there. And and just hearing that, I feel like he's probably feeding that into, into the dressing room himself, to be honest with you. Because, mm. you know, Ollie Watkins was, was a good player at Brentford, especially since, since Emery's come in as well, you know. He was a good player with us in the Premier League before that under Dean Smith and, and a little bit under Gerrard as well. But since Emery's come in, every single one of them has taken their game from here right up to here and I, th I think as long as Emery's at the club I can't see too many players being pushing themselves out if you know if you see what I'm trying to say yeah. I think if 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 a bid of uh the the word the number that was reported the other day was 85 million if a bit of 85 million pounds comes in for Douglas Louise then we might think about it and he might leave but I don't see I don't see any of the players, if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I don't see any of them pushing pushing for that exit. I think what you what you're also in a position to do, I know Doug Sui recently signed a contract. It, yeah. how many years does Watkins have left? Again, he's recently signed a contract as well since Emery's come see, in. I think that was about I think that might have been last year, um, or last summer, so, so it's something along those lines. But he's he's got a five year contract. Let's put so it now way. I didn't even I knew Douglas Fees. I didn't know what. So now you've got a yeah. power play because no, they're not worth the fees I'm about to mention. But what you can do is when you've got a, an asset in your squad that you know clubs want, you can mm -hmm. then just put up a price that will scare them off. Because I feel like yep. unless you're United or Chelsea that just paid that asking price, and there's a reason why they set that precedent. If you was to quote. Watkins and Louis at prices they're not worth, clubs will be like, look, they're good, but they're not that. And it scares them off. And you're in a position to do that. So that's where you've actually got the power play. So you're, you're spot on. You're actually you know spot what? On. Do you know what, Pots? 
Sam needs to clip that up and get it sent into the Race for Europe group on WhatsApp because <laughs> nobody understands my point when I say we need to be selling. Louise is worth 120 million. No, he is. Of course, he's not worth that much. But if that's the that price. Quote, that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Finally, someone understands my point and see what I'm trying to say. Mate, you try, need to overinflate these numbers. Try explaining that to Lawless and crew. They ain't going to happen. They ain't going to happen, man. Just Lawless already you did see, it. You see the, with, exactly. With that's, that's what he did. He, he doesn't, he doesn't understand it when I do it, but because it's West Ham and Declan Rice, it, it all fucking fits into place for him. Because uh, you know what's going to happen now, Billy, yeah? When a club inevitably comes in for Kudus, it could even be this summer or next summer, that um, Lawless is going to want 100. He's going to be quoting nine figures as well. Yeah, so, exactly, exactly. They're doing it for Bowen yeah, already. Yeah. They're doing it for Bowen already, so, yeah. yeah. Mate, it's just team good Billy, to see man. someone on the same, same <laughs> page as me. Someone's I like finally Billy. understood it. I like Billy. Love it, man. Love it. Listen, um, before we go into Arsenal chat, I'm going to come to Mo in a minute. Please make sure you support our sponsors, guys. Football Prizes is back. Make sure that you do me a favour. Go over to Football Prizes. They've got some unbelievable prizes as it stands at the moment. What have we got on offer right now? We have got an anti-Joshua and Tyson Fury signed glove, and we've got a Legends prize as well that Mo would absolutely love to get him for. One ninety five for a Baresi and Maldini signed shirt. Make sure you do that, and Rui Costa as well. So make sure you get involved for that one. All you Gooners, there's an unbelievable Arsenal prize that you have to get in for. $3.95 a ticket for Thierry Henry, one of a kind, signed shirt and frame. And you've got the 04 Arsene Wenger Invincibles, one off prize of Patrick Vieira, as well as Freddie Lundberg and Gilberto Silva. For all you Chelsea fans, we've got a Cole Palmer signed and custom framed Chelsea shirt. Probably one of the best players that Chelsea have got this season. And some are saying son of the season. Uh, for you West Ham fans, we've got Lucas Paqueta signed shirt, um, as well as Alvarez and Ward Prowse. And as you go up, there is a couple of really good opportunities. You've got the Spurs versus Arsenal, North London derby, hospitality tickets for two. Please make sure that you're in for that one. 395 could be an unbelievably good close game, that one um, for the title. Billy, we've got Matty Cash and Jacob Ramsey shirts for all you Villa fans. That's 395 on footballprizes.co.uk. Make sure that you are in for it. And you've got a last chance to get your 195 ticket for England versus Slovenia, a prize for a private jet to go out and watch England. So make sure that you are in it to win it, people. Footballprizes.co.uk, unbelievable prizes there. And not just football prizes now as well. So make sure that you're in with a shout there. Footballprizes.co.uk, link is in the description. Mo, let me come to you, my friend. Arsenal Villa, how do you see this one going this season? Is this a potential banana skin this weekend for Arsenal? Or do you think they'll get the job done with one eye being on Wednesday night? It is a potential banana skin, but Arsenal on paper should win the game. Um, Villa's away record is not as bad as people put it. They're still fifth on the table, by the way, as an away record, as an away team. But because their home record is, is very good and because they dominated Arsenal, Manchester City, people look at their away record and say, ah, oh, you're bad. Again, it's Manchester City, to be honest. They should have won the game. Actually, they they created chances. They went behind really? the city's defense. Yeah, they, they created chances. They Didn't created they chances. One. <laughs> yeah, but the first half, it was Zaniolo, also a heavily. And I'm going to tell you something. Well, by the way. If Zaniolo is not what you guys know, and I said that by the way, when I was speaking to Hossam, I told him we looked at the Villa injuries, and we said Zaniolo is going to play, and I told him Zaniolo. It's because Zaniolo is an inter US player, right? Before we, we send him, he came play. from your academy. Yeah, I didn't know that. Had him a player for inter, we traded him for Niangolan and paid 40 million. Um, he's a player who is the typical Italian forward, doesn't like to defend, he doesn't put all the effort, he only, only plays when the team is going forward. And he's scared for himself, which showed in the, in the free kick for Foden. He literally moved out of the way because he didn't want to get hit. He literally did that. Embarrassing. That, that. that Villa could have got something out of the game if Zaniolo was not that guy, basically, in the wall. Um, but in this game, Potts, I I feel like you're going to win the game. It's not about the quality. It's about, it's about Aston Villa 
after Thursday. They are you play Tuesday, so you got two days extra. They played Thursday, and they had McGinn played, Watkins played, and it was a tough game against Lille. You know what I mean? It wasn't an easy game. So I believe Arsenal will be more prepared for the game, and it's at the Emirates. And I think Arsenal are taking both competitions differently, the Champions League and the league. So, tactically speaking, I don't think Villa will drop deep and defend. They just don't. They won't do that. They will still try to a little bit play higher. I'm not saying a high line, but a mid-block, as people say. I don't like these words. And I think it will be, it will be, it'll be Arsenal's game. And I think Arsenal will will get a couple of goals. I'm um, I'm predicting 3-1 Arsenal, actually. Not that close of a win. I'm predicting 3-1 Arsenal. Tactically, Unai Emery isn't going to sit with 10 men behind the ball. He's just not going to do that. He will still try to a little bit press some sides and, and, and we'll have spaces for Arsenal. But Arsenal have to win the game. And we know you have to win every game. And I believe this is not a banana skip. This is not as tough as people say. I'll be surprised if you don't win the game. I'll be surprised. Mm. Okay, interesting. Roms, I know we were talking before, you said that Martinelli could have a good game here um, in getting in behind. I know uh, Unai Emery looks at that high line, but some people are saying that it might be the time for him to not go for that and see what happens there. I know that Arsenal, there's rumours that Gabriel might be out of this game. They haven't seen him in training today. I'm not sure if that's true. Um, a lot of people then jumped on it and said, we've heard this before, he'll probably start. But I've not heard anything my end that he is injured. So we'll see what happens there. Um, big news if he is out because Gabriel and Saliba's partnership has been immense. So that would probably mean Kivior would have to come in the middle and we'd have to play Tommy Asu left back and then Ben White Saliba will be on the right side. So it wouldn't be an, a, a horrendously weak defence, but it would certainly knock the partnership of Gabriel and Saliba that's been so good, man. So what do you make of this game, bruv? Arsenal have got a win. Obviously, you want Villa to pick up something being a Liverpool fan, but do you think they can? Unfortunately not, Billy, this is where I can't back your club no more. No, don't I worry. Don't worry. I know, I know, I'm not backing us. <laughs> you know, um, you know the when how Mo was saying their way record is one of the best. I think away the away table they're at sit. For me, it's the big games away from home because I don't know if Billy will agree. The Spurs game, Spurs should have finished ended that game first half, and they had a back four or full backs. I think they had no Van der Ven, no Rome. They had no centre backs available. They played a back four, full back, and Villa did what they need to do. But Spurs, I think performance wise, you might agree, Billy, you were at your best. We got, in my opinion, one of our best wins against Villa, albeit it was early in the season, the three 0 the three 0 win. I think away at City, City. Mo's right. Villa did have enough chances. And again, it was a depleted squad, rotated squad, like you said. But again, at the end of the day, they, they still lost lost the game. United, two goals up. I think that was no, naive, no, naivety. No, no, Sorry, no, no. I have to chuck it in the game. <laughs> it was very naive and then they end up winning. If you told me United would win that, come back and win that game 3-2, I would have called you mad. So I just think, I rate you now, Marie. He's done a fantastic job. But I think the big games, I just think he kind of, shoots himself in the foot. And maybe he shouldn't adapt. A lot of managers believe in their principles and they, they stand by it. I think Villa will give Arsenal... If Gabriel's not playing, he's injured. I think Villa could give Arsenal trouble, but they'll just be too open. And this, for me, is where Martinelli comes into the fold, like I was speaking to you about earlier, Potts, because he hasn't had the best seasons. It's been one of one of his underperforming seasons, but I just feel with that high line, Arsenal always go to that right-hand side with Odegaard, Ben White and Saka. Understandably, them three when they link up. Some of the stuff they do is, is mesmeric. But I think I think Arsenal might actually go to the left-hand side. And Martinelli, for me, he's not a ball-to-feet player. He's more in behind. A lot of his goals are like Thierry Henry-esque, where he opens his body up and he'll slow it past the fender. And I just feel this might be the, be the game for him where he gets a few goals on his team sheet. I think one minimum, he can maybe get a brace. But... I think this will be quite comfortable for Arsenal. I'll probably go... I keep changing between 3-1 and 2-0. But I think it will be similar to your, your last game where you just you, you get a nice 2-0 win. But I think, yeah, Arsenal win this game for me. But I'm Gabriel, ready. If Gabriel doesn't play, Arsenal will concede. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if Gabriel doesn't play, Arsenal concede. But I think if Gabriel sucks... I just feel like, you know, earlier you were saying, Potts, that there's rumours. I think we did it with Kanati where the the training, the last training day before the game, they say he's not available. Then you're in the squad. I think sometimes it's a precaution. So I think 
we'll, ne- we'll know. We'll have to wait and see. We'll, the only way we'll Who's going to be the center back then? Kivio. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, Saliba um, and Kivio are center backs, and then it'll be Tommy Asu and Ben White fullbacks. But I've just looked luck. at the football London. Uh, the football good London. Luck. What's that? Good luck. With who? <laughs> With who? With Kivior and Saliba. Saliba has oh, been very Kivior. shaky lately. And Kivior isn't the guy to stop uh, Bailey, Diaby, Watkins, McGinn running behind the the, the midfield line. Even Rogers, I, I, I liked him from even Arlington. Here is what He's I would not- do, Dan Potts. I'll play Declan Rice as centre back and I'll play Party in the DM. Yeah, That's but not again, it's not a bad shot, but I feel like people now see Kivior as a left back when everyone yes. was laughing at him at left back. Not long ago, people were laughing at Kivior playing left back, and now it's like he was actually quite. But good they were laughing center. more than at him centre back. Nah, he was actually okay at centre back. It was when he went to left back, he looks poor because we were asking him to invert. Then we switched it to Ben White inverting. And we were okay. I think he can do a job at centre back. I'm not saying he's Van Dyke, but at the same time, I don't think it's a bad shout. I feel would like. Put... Go on. So would you put potentially Tommy Yasu there? Yeah, see, Tommy Yasu for me would be a better option than Ben White there. I he's like the Tommy. Most Yasu. Overrated player in the Arsenal squad. Oh come on, Mo. Who Tommy Yasu? Tommy. Um... Why? He's one of the best one-on-one defenders we got. He's not there. bad. Okay, so here is the thing. He's not bad. When I say overrated, I mean he might be a six or a seven out of ten player. Arsenal fans make him like he's an essential player. The guy last no, season played no, no. 600 minutes. This season when he came on, he looked all right. He's not a top player. To be honest with you, Dan, he's just a squad player. Since he was That's at Bologna, fine, wasn't he at Bologna? I mean, if we need a squad player. I think he's good like that. This is squad, but, but the way you guys talk about him, yeah, but that's like, fine, he's like he's a savior. Him, You're clutch. I think you guys are clutching. To be honest, he's the best one-on-one player. He's this, he's the best one-on-one defender. Oh, like, one Bissaka is a better defender than him one-on-one. With all due respect, I haven't seen, I haven't seen a know, horrendous game. Like, he's, he's, I actually think you guys overrate him. Like he's a good player. I'm not saying he's an atrocious player. But the way you guys talk about him sometimes, like he's the Messiah. Well, Tommy Asu should have done that. He's good, but I'm, I'm not seeing what you guys are seeing. I don't know, him, I don't know if he's a savior. I don't really hear people saying he's a savior. Tommy Asu is the guy. I think oh my people God. talk Tommy about Saliba and Gabriel. Like. Do you know what he's? But I feel Tommy Asu is good when you, you don't really even need him to see out a game because just look at your record this season. But I feel like he's good for the last 10, 15 minutes. Because Here the reason why look, at, look at MK. Sorry, Roms. Look at MK's comment. That's <laughs> But do you know what is what I'm talking about? Seriously, that's what I'm talking about. I think the reason why I think the reason why Arteta doesn't really favour Tommy Asu even when he's fit, because you lose you lose that element of control. You can say what you want about Zinchenko and Big Up Don. You can say what you want about Zinchenko and Kivior, but they can invert and they they're comfortable where Tommy Asu is great defensively. In my opinion, he is great defensively, but going forward. Arsenal pride themselves on being comfortable with the ball. In an Arteta team, every player has to be comfortable with the ball. And Tommy Asu sometimes just looks a bit unstuck. So I think he's that player to bring on last 10, 10, 20 minutes, to be fair. But you know what? His natural, I think from Bologna, he was a, correct me if wrong, he's a centre back. So give him a chance. I, 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 think I think he's someone who can be versatile. I would say Ben White. Really. If you had another right back, I would say Ben White sent it back. But mm. Cedric to come in, like you don't really. But want would Tommy Yasu not play right back? She did for periods of last yeah. season. Didn't Tommy Yasu, play Tommy right Yasu could play right back. I, I actually think he will start at left back, Tommy Yasu, and I think it will be Kivio your left centre back. This is if Gabriel's out. Gabriel could play. Yeah, we're doing all of this. Yeah. The word, is, <laughs> yeah. the, word is, yeah. the word is from Arteta from Football London was we have another day to assess tomorrow, but he's it, it, he you know he didn't say he's out. So he's, we've got another day tomorrow, whereas everyone else is playing. So we can assess tomorrow and see where we're at. Would you, As for Julian, him? Would you risk him before the Bayern minute game? If uh, no, I probably wouldn't if he's out. I mean, I don't know how bad he is, Mo. If it's like, oh, yeah. this is a real risky one, then probably not. But if he's like got a knock and he can get through it, then I probably would. As for Timber, a few people asking. Apparently, Mikarte said that he's got a play on under 23s game, and now it's about match fitness for him. So that's a player that everyone's forgotten about, by the way. He was unbelievable in preseason and then played obviously at left back and got his really bad injury. He's probably one of our better players in preseason in the community shield. He was really good. So I'm looking to see how he comes back. 
I don't think it would be sensible to necessarily risk any players because I just my friend just sent me something as we're live. Bayer Leverkusen only need, I think, two points to win the league. If Tuchel's smart, he literally changes the whole eleven and just yeah. rests them. The league's done. The league is done. Anybody, bro. So they're, they're, playing under, they're playing under 21s, bro. Yeah, they have to. Done. They have to. So you don't want... They're going to be fully up for it. And I think as much as people can say, yeah, but Arteta's doing a game at a time, I get that. But in his subconscious, he's still going to look at that Bayern Munich game, man. He, I know he's going to focus at Villa at hand, but he has to because knowing that they can rest their whole whole eleven, I think Mo's right to risk certain players in this game would be would be quite quite mm. risky. Yeah, so it, is getting, it is getting to the part of the season where it you is, just go put all your eggs in one basket, isn't it? Well, it's hard. I mean, some some people don't have any any baskets or any eggs. You know what I'm saying? It's just not. You, you have a deep squad. You have a, you have a good you have a good squad now with Party back, Tomiyasu back. Yeah, Zinchenko yeah. back. You know what I mean? Like you Martinez back. Them, are playing. Jesus is back. You have a good squad. You should be able to rotate. Just going through them all on Wednesday. Hmm? Do you see? What, you, do you I see, see you going through. Back? No. Yeah. Okay. And you know, we did a show. We did a show on Mo's show. Mo even said before a ball had been kicked. Bayern are his favourite. So we, me and Rory, kind of looked at him like. You sure he's that? Listen, it's different. The experience and that will get them over the line. You're in the stadium pots. You're in the stadium pots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I was different. There, it's a different sport. Yeah, yeah. People don't understand. It's a different sport. I don't think, to answer your question, I don't think you, you go through now. I just but think... I wouldn't be surprised if you go through, though. But if, yeah, you, ask, if, you, if you ask me to bet my either. life, if you ask me to bet my life now, when one team's going, one of the teams, I'll bet my life on Bayern Munich going through. That's a safer bet. Stupidly, well, possibly it. stupidly, I'm still putting my faith in Arsenal. Big <laughs> up, Billy. Big up, Billy. I will say this: I don't think we will go through, but I know what will happen if we go out. We we'll, we would have lost to Wigan, not Bayern Munich. That's the problem. Yeah. Like people, will know what is it, isn't oh, it? Because yeah. isn't it? The that. problem is rivals like Roms kind of gaslighted you, and then your fan base believed it. <laughs> it's, it's literally what happened then. Like they gaslighted you, and then your fan base went with it. They kind of, they kind of took the narrative and like, yeah, yes, was smashed. Do you bro, do you know predicted four nil, bro. <laughs> do, do you know it is for share? Yeah. And they were I'm serious. Still, if you get knocked out, I'm gonna be shameless and still rub it in because the only thing we can say after oh, we're the European not. Cup, even Billy can say it to you the European Cup. However. If I'm being objective, your quarterfinal, getting knocked out to buy me... I think this season, isolation, some rivals will say, oh, um, uh, you should you should still be disappointed because they're bad. But overall, there's no shame. They're one of the European giants. And it's your first quarterfinal in seven years out. So if I'm being objective, it's still something to build from. Because even, look, Pep, Pep's, um, Pep's Man City teams... He had to do it bit by bit. Even us, I can't even say us with Crow. That's not a good example. But a lot of teams have to keep getting maybe quarters, then semis the next year, then eventually get to the final. I think Simeone kind of done it with, with Fletco. But it will still be quite su successful, man, your first season back in. But I'm not going to say that. I'll be real. That's objective. A, a lot of people speak. were like, oh, still you know what? Harry Kane going there. They can win a Champions League and a league with this. And now because they're not playing as well domestically, it's like, oh, well, Arsenal through. be about 4-1. I saw the people in my chat going 3-0, 4-1 at the Emirates. I'm like, I went 1-0 Arsenal. I thought it was going to be a really close game. And obviously, <laughs> no, it wasn't really close game. No. If Arsenal get knocked out, you're going to be saying, who's your daddy? You're going to bring that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, not. I'm not. I'm not. That Listen, man, we got to wrap up. Before we do, Billy, what are you going for a score prediction? Oh, I'd, I'd love to be optimistic, but I, we're just too easy to score goals against at the minute. So I'm going to say, <laughs> if, if, I'm go if I'm going for a genuine prediction of what I think the score will be, I think it's probably going to be 3-1 Arsenal, unfortunately. OK, I went 2-0, but that's the uh, hoping that Gabriel's fit. If he's not, it might be 2-1, but we'll see what happens. One last on. question before we wrap up here for Billy. I think Spurs drop points, by the way, in the early morning kickoff. They go to St. James Park, and we've seen recently the Luton game. Um, when they came back against, I think it was West Ham, they've got goals in them at St. James, specifically at 12.30 as well. I think both of them games were early. <laughs> but do you think Emery might anticipate... Um, Spurs dropping points because they still got a game in hand on you, but it's against Chelsea, you they never win. Yeah. At. You think he might be like, you know what? Even though we've got an iron conference, this could 
not a chance, but it's that like, no, let's give it a go because Spurs have just dropped points. Because I think Spurs have a draw or lose that game. I think Newcastle will get the, the better of them. No, I, I think Emery's got in his mind what he's what he's gonna well, do. He's already and, the, yeah, regardless of what, the, exactly. If, yeah. if Spurs uh, drop points, then then happy days, fantastic. If they don't, then then so be it. We've just got to focus on what we're gonna do. And I yeah. think Emery's he, he knows what he has to do in Europe, obviously, with the amount of experience that he has. He's he's gonna know how to how to attack that. So I I don't think that, that result Before will have we wrap too much up, an impact. I want to I wanna really ask you a question. Simple question. No, like just short answer. If I'm telling you now, get forth, guarantee Champions League or win the Conference League? Conference League. Good answer. Trophy. Yeah. Always go trophy, oh Billy. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's well, not you, 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 t- you tell me. Four. Yeah. yeah, four. Yeah. You go, yes, you, you won. You tell me at the beginning of the season that Villa would have Conference League and Europa League, and I would have snapped your hands off. Snapped your hands off. Finish, awesome, finished man. in the Europa League places, yeah. I'll add to that as well. All right, but yeah, of course it'd be disappointed if we don't finish in the Champions League. Whether that whether it goes to fourth or fifth, um, it'd be majorly disappointed if if it does go down to fifth and we still don't get it. Um, but no, I I think we'll yeah, just to just to see my team win a trophy in my lifetime yeah. that's well, not the playoff well, final. It, that it, it's something that stay with me for for a lifetime. Not the playoff final. <laughs> <laughs> mate big up to you man listen stay tuned people because you're going to be heading over to uh Ju- footy judge mo now uh who's going live with mo uh liverpool lot liverpool therapy right uh, liverpool like therapy therapy. jamie uh jerry james and we're joined by Chez just to go uh wind them up I think so. Listen, man, get over there. Rob, Rob's will be like, oh, I'm glad I'm not going on to that one. <laughs> uh, listen, if I wasn't already on Monty's show, I really, I would have been on, on Mo's show because it'll be therapy. Definitely. But yeah, set, 6.30, we're going to go live on, I'm going to be on Big Six Band. It's my last of, actually, no, it's not my last of the day. Flawless later on as well. That's going to be therapy. But yeah, yeah. it doesn't stop. But yeah, that's Listen, man, make sure you do me a favor. Go follow Roms, his Twitter handles there. Go follow Billy, Twitter handles there. Go follow Judge Mo if you're not already. You're going to be sent over there now. Tonight, we're back 9 p.m. for our Arsenal Roundabout show with all the Arsenal lads. They'll be on talking all things of the weekend. So make sure you're there at 9 p.m. back over here. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. We're out of here. Peace. <laughs>